X searches. Hey, everybody, tune in to Recent Tartarian. Recent Tartarian. Recent Tartarian. Join us on another exciting adventure of Exertus. They've apparently spent billions of dollars in order to replicate some sort of an effigy to this Changi bunny rabbit astronaut character. Maybe there's something that they consider worth all of that money. So you have to kind of wonder, is there any truth to it? And if there is, what the heck is it? But aside from the Chinese, there are tons of people that talk about flying ships and not all of them simply air balloons. I'm not going to go full-on ancient Egyptian aviation episode on you. However, I've always found some of the hieroglyphs to be convincing. And if you look at the broader picture, Egypt really only accounts for a small portion of what we expect to have existed in Mauritania and around Central Africa and the Sahara. In fact, from our understanding of history, as the calendar has been mangled for centuries, and many events that we think to be millennia ago might only be centuries ago, it seems like science has finally admitted that the Sahara has turned to sand only in the last few thousand years, not over the hundreds of millions of years that Fantasia would have had you believe. And in fact, something that seems not out of place in Egypt or any of the Arab states, the mixture between the simple human lifestyle and the wonders of modern technology, perhaps even super magical futuristic technology. This photo, I could imagine seeing a painting of a thousand years earlier. In fact, in a lot of ways, I think I have, but most of the European pictures present these as some sort of anthropomorphic character. It's in the Islamic and Asian arts that you start to see things that represent more sciencey pictures and have less metaphor. And I think this has less to do with scientific observation and more to do with hiding aspects of the picture in order that only certain people could understand them. Whereas the Moors were working for the furtherment and betterment. And similarly, in India and in China, inventors had other aspirations. It seemed like society had developed to a point with paper currency, stabilized trade, patent office, and intellectual property. And so it had made it possible for many inventors to work on these crafts with the commission by wealthy nobility. So as much as we see in Germany, Switzerland, and France, there are examples for centuries earlier throughout Manchuria and China. And it seems kind of funny how many examples there are of this exact scenario where the Chinese invent something like a battery or gunpowder or flying ships or rockets and guns only to find no use for them and centuries later their own toys being sold back to them as military grade technology technology that inevitably would engulf and control their life but so much of this information was hidden by military that literally 90 percent or more of it does not exist anymore the best information that we have today actually comes from the sonora air club and the prussians because the prussians were so interested in making these airships that they created well-documented records which albeit were intended only for their own lodges ended up in the hands of the public eventually by the beginning of the 21st century. And some of these airships are as absurd as you might think. They're literally boats attached to blimps, just like in the Hollywood movies. The funny thing is, there's no reason why this shouldn't be able to work, so maybe it's not as ridiculous as it sounds. And these early pictures of the Hindenburg flying by the Pyramid of Giza and the Sphinx, while I know there will be some channels that would put more effort into saying these pictures are older than they are, I'll simply state there's no reason why this couldn't have happened earlier than we say it did. For thousands of years, in fact, there's no reason why there weren't more balloons. In fact, the shape of the balloon even seems like something that we've seen in ancient pictures throughout the centuries. Some of these balloons do look more blimp-like. It is interesting that at certain angles they do look like discs. And considering the symbology of the sun disc 
it does make a certain amount of sense that it would be. There's a certain usefulness to the shape. It seems like in ancient Manchuria, the use of the spheroid balloon was more common than the rocket blimp or the cigar-shaped craft. It might be for a number of reasons, perhaps because it was easier to create this large amount of textile, but I honestly think it had more to do with the fact that giving it an equal static made it possible to control and maneuver the craft more proportionally than a craft that would be speeding in one direction like a torpedo. One of the other thoughts, of course, is that these balloons are so ancient that the technology predates practicality. It seems like the ancient Uyghurs had air balloons. These are the people that make up the Turkish and blonde population of China. There are actually a number of Uyghurs around the world experienced ethnic cleansing over the last few centuries through a very traumatic history of events. One of the biggest tragedies, aside from the loss of the people and their culture, is their apparent technology, where it seems that Uyghur balloons were used to traverse hundreds of miles over plains, highlands, prairies, and savannas, something that simply cannot be proven at this point, something that there is ample evidence of records for, yet due to the annihilation of these records by the Chinese and Soviet state, there simply is not enough to corroborate its existence. However, that's today, and we're still looking. But one place where we can look for that is in China, because Tartarian Chitao, as Marco Polo's maps showed it, or China, Manchurian China as it's referred to, not to be confused with the PRC, which is the state representing the land of mainland China today, outside of Hong Kong and Taiwan. Across Manchuria, Tartaria, and Chitao, the adaptation of these Uyghur balloons in use of lanterns and allegedly human flight have postulated the hypothesis of aerial silk routes, which would have utilized these silk balloons in order to fly across the silk routes for trade purposes. Silk is a very important technology, a nanotechnology created through biomimesis. It's actually cultivated by the Bombyx mori, a sort of moth which produces this nanoscopic silk, one of the strongest materials on the planet, a thousand times stronger than steel and lighter than cotton. Over the last few thousand years, there have been many environmental disasters and historical resets where technology has been lost. Yet, in different regions, many sorts of technologies continue to be produced. It seems plausible that while aviation technology and trade might have been devastated, regions which produce these silkworms may have been able to continue cultivating them far from the municipal powers which were trading their textiles. How broad these aerial silk routes could have been, not just across China, or India, or Africa, or Eurasia, but even into the Americas too. One of the greatest examples of air balloons in the ancient Americas are the Nazca aerial crafts. And this is the hypothesis, these drawings that you see here in the desert of Peru. Pictures of giant birds and other Peruvian animals that are so big that they're miles across and they're only viewable from the sky. These sort of rudimentary prototypical crop circles, pictures of giant versions of tiny animals, leave a lot of people wondering what the heck and why about the Peruvian Nazca, an indigenous people which must have gone out of their way to find this desert zone, a very flat place, perfect for one ways. By the way, those lines across the desert where you can see people have driven across the Nazca lines have only been there for the last few years. Who were the tourists that destroyed the Nazca lines? Greenpeace, who'd left a giant flyer over the Nazca lines that said, don't pollute the earth. So it makes you think it probably wasn't done by aliens, but maybe it was done by human beings who had more advanced technology than you might have thought. People at least amused enough from balloons to look at monkeys. Now you'd be surprised how many people, how much sense that actually makes. I mean, in a balloon, this thing looks amazing and it's kind of hysterical. I mean, if you didn't have YouTube or TV, this would be the highlight of your life. And just imagine if you actually made one of these things. You would want to fly up here and just hang out. You'd be cracking up. In the fourth century, the more you look at it, it seems like the only logical story. Yet the hypothesis really only comes from the chariot of the gods. There was some really good experiments done by Jim Woodman in the 70s and he discovered thousands of ancient grave sites around Nazca which contained finely woven textiles that were suitable for airtight balloon fabric. Also 
tons of braided rope and ceramic pottery, which have suggestions in the art that depict hot air balloons attached to tie ropes. Yet it's still not generally considered a fact that there were manned balloon flights until the recorded history of Brazil in 1709. However, like I said, Jim did some really good experiments and actually created, using materials only available to the ancient Peruvians, examples of these prototypical airships that he saw on the pottery and they work like a charm. There's a number of really great examples of the Woodman blimp and the air balloon looks a lot like a regular Chinese lantern. It's basically an upside down pyramid and he's even gone as far as to draw the sun god on the front of it. But these things work. I mean this is it built out of material from Peru above Nazca. Flying over Nazca, he's even in a raft. If anyone was wondering if you could have a raft attached to a hot air balloon. Yeah, yeah, you can have a raft. So ancient hot air balloons, incontestably, I'm a believer. Where, oh, is, is this airing right now? Is this, Recent this program Harry is coming to you by a Relay 2 satellite, a spacecraft orbiting the Earth at a speed of over 17,000 miles per hour. Hey, everybody, tune in to Recent Tartarian. Recent Tartarian. Exertus.